All right, so here's the deal. After spending a beautiful Sunday afternoon at National Trail Raceway with the Malibu and the kids, I wake up Monday to this crap weather. Vicky makes me a little breakfast sandwich, but I didn't get time to enjoy it. I get summoned outside. I was supposed to be at Jeg's at nine. I was up till three in the morning oh, editing video. Jesus, I'm gonna be there when they open. Oh. That was like four hours ago. True to their word, Jeremy and Kenny were here first thing this morning. 7.30 a.m., the wrenches started flying. We've got a lot of work to get done today. The first thing we've got to do is get this transmission out and swap out the flex plate. Kenny gets all the stuff pulled out of the car, compiles a list of parts that I need to go get, and then I get on my way to Jigs after I shared what was left of my breakfast sandwich, of course. Now, generally, when it's raining like this, I'll leave the dogs at home because they tend to get muddy footprints all over the inside of the vehicles. But today, I guess, is a special day. I just couldn't say no. I went ahead and tossed them in the Suburban, and we head into Columbus to 11th Avenue. And luckily, Uncle Terry's working today. What's happening? I have a list. Is this part of the Kenny Powers project? It is. <laughs> Jeopardy category. Oh, Still no. Mechanics and random. I like uh oh. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't know where Kenny found that piece of paper. But I was nervous at first. I thought maybe I'd brought the wrong list. Oh, yes, we got, yes, we got. Several well, books. I don't have any besides the one they gave him, so I have to then. That'd be good something to jump now. So Uncle Terry starts working on my parts list, and the last thing I ask him to do is check this part number on the converter and see if you can match it to anything. Sure enough, Terry figured it out. Now we know what the converter <laughs> wow. is. You made it back in a hurry. <laughs> Come on, scrap. Get in here. Get in there. So I hightail back to the shop and drop off all these parts to the guys. Even Big Rob's here this morning, willing to lend a hand. Everyone knows we've got a lot of work to get done before this afternoon. So we crank up the stereo and we get down. We've got to have this Camaro loaded and delivered to the northwest side of Columbus by 5.30 this afternoon. And in order to get that done, there is not a single second to waste.
At around 4.30 this afternoon, I wasn't sure if we were gonna make our deadline or not. And I definitely don't wanna screw around Rich and Austin at Lucor, who have set aside time this week to work on Kenny's Camaro. So where do we stand, Kenny Powers? Is this thing ready to load on trailer? Yep, load on trailer. Let's go, we gotta roll. Now at this point, the Camaro isn't completely perfectly finished, right? But it does have a brand new starter. It has a brand new flex plate. It has a brand new transmission pan. And the transmission shouldn't have to come out of this car for any reason, <laughs> at least we hope. So that once the exhaust is on this thing, we know that the transmission and everything should be able to stay in the car and we don't have to worry about taking it back apart. So we load it up on the trailer. Uncle Rob guides him up on there. And we hope to take advantage of this break in the rain today. Because as Kenny gets out of the Camaro, we realize there's no way to roll up the power windows. <laughs> Third gen problems. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I told Rob how much I appreciated him being here today and helping us. Because without Rob, we would have never got this job done in time. Thank you. That was a big help, Rob. We couldn't have got that all done without you. Yeah, not a problem, buddy. Get it done. You're a damn good wrench, Uncle Rob. I try sometimes. It comes, <laughs> you, it comes to me every now and again. I ain't never seen you not try, <laughs> Uncle Rob. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you very much. You're very welcome. We got a roll, gentlemen. Can you guys shut the garage up for me? So at last, me, Kenny Powers, Scrappy Doo, and June Pup 2 are on the road to Lucor. And Scrappy's doing her usual routine. Weeble wobble and hold me. You gotta literally hold and pet this dog for at least the first 45 minutes of any trip before she'll calm down and relax. Anyway, we make it up to Lucor barely in time to meet up with Rich and Austin before they head home and enjoy the rest of their evenings with their families. So I try not to waste any time pulling in the lot and getting this Camaro unstrapped and getting it unloaded. I definitely want to make it back home before dinner tonight because Vicky's got chicken and noodles waiting on me too. So anyway, we pull in to what Austin and Rich call the Church of Bad Decisions. <laughs> the 69 El Camino is still in there they're waiting on parts for it. And they've got a whole list of other things to get done, like this Corvette that's sitting on the alignment rack, a Ford Expedition that's in for service, and this Jeep that someone's lifted and put bigger tires on, and it needs ring and pinion swapped out front and rear. And at 6.30 in the evening, that's what Rich was working on when we pulled into the shop. I brought Kenny in and introduced him to Rich, and Rich asked Kenny to go ahead and bring the Camaro straight in the shop and put it on the rack. That way we can check out what's underneath this car and get a game plan for the exhaust, the rear end, Rich, Austin got you into this. Yeah, I'm used to that. <laughs> So whatever you decide to do, if you're going to fix this, just realize that when you fix the age-old problem of long tubes under a third gen, all of a sudden you're going to get every third gen with long tubes here for exhaust. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm not sure how we're going to do this yet, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll come up with something. This doesn't help. No, none of it helps. Thank you, guys. You bet, man. Seriously. I wouldn't say thank you yet. Yeah. Well. Hopefully I won't catch the car on fire while we're walking. <laughs> and sign a release paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny has done a lot for our family. I mean, a lot. Yeah. And I think that's the, the thing that resonates with a lot of people. If you read the comments on there, everybody loves him. We love him. Uh, but he's got this problem with third gens. He just won't let go of it. 
He's got problems. That's problems. <laughs> All right, Rich. All right, Austin. We'll get we'll get working on it. Thank you we'll guys we very much. We. Sorry, I'll get working on it. Oh. I'll go shopping. You please get to go shopping. <laughs> Make videos. What's up, guys? So I was upstairs this morning editing a video and um, I heard a truck and trailer out front of the house and think anything about it. Vicky comes yelling up the steps. What was that? I'm like, I don't know. What are you talking about? Well, somebody just pulled out of here in your truck and trailer and knocked over the trash cans on the way out the driveway. I said, call 911. Of course she doesn't. She doesn't want to call 911 until she calls Billy and Tommy and then maybe, who knows, the neighbors. So I call 911 a few minutes later and report it, make a post on Facebook. Luckily, last night before uh, we left for Lucor, I had taken a couple of videos of the truck and trailer. So, you know, the trailer is actually my dad's trailer. And so I had the plate number for the trailer. So I put up a post on Facebook and hopefully we find the truck and trailer. It's my dad's trailer. It's a brand new Gator made 16 foot car trailer. And I've had that dually for a long time. It's got six brand new tires on it, new flatbed. The truck is in good shape except for the body. But it's the only thing I've got to tow with. Well, I've got the Suburban, but as far as the big race car trailer, which we were gonna take this weekend to Cincy Street Nights, that's not gonna happen. After I filled out the report with the sheriff, my neighbor sent me this video clip of this guy driving off in my dually, flying out the driveway. And then 45 minutes later, I get a phone call. So everybody's out looking for my truck. The sheriff left, took the report, and they put out a be on the lookout for the truck and the trailer. Uh, I put a Facebook post up and I've had two or three reports back to me. But I just got a phone call from somebody who has evidently found my truck sitting in the middle of the road. I don't know what's going on. They gave me the address and I'm headed there now. It's about 20 or 30 minutes from our house. And I'm in the old 64, we're headed that way. See what's left of my truck and trailer when we get there. The destination is on your right, 10795 High Point Road. Arrived. Left a bag of clothes in there, and there's information about him. Well, that's nice. Right out of Millersport. Look, the mirrors are knocked off the windshield, and this is the major damage it looks like. Sir, I have a YouTube channel. I'm not trying to cause no, you any trouble fine. today. You're fine. Well, she survived. At least I got mom and dad's trailer back. That's the main thing I was concerned about. That trailer belongs to my dad. And uh, I wanted to make sure I got his trailer back. I was the most concerned about that. This idiot left something in the truck. As far as I know he did, but like I said, it's something about, you I think of Licking County. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's stolen out of Licking County. Yes. Um, we so we're waiting on Licking County to get once here? Once I get uh, confirmation back from Licking County what they're wanting to do, or if they'll send an officer down here, what okay. they're to do with it, but yeah. All right. Since it's stolen out of Licking County, the only thing we do is just basically we're here to Secure it till they get a confirmation what they want to do with it. Okay. All right. Can I can I just video what yeah, what's yeah. okay? I wish that would have gone through his damn head.
Are the keys still in it? All right, guys, so uh, it's definitely my truck and it's definitely tore all to hell, but it's still drivable, I think. Um, it does run, Rob started it up, it does still run. It's tore all to pieces, but main thing is my mom and dad's trailer is okay. That's my dad's trailer. He bought that brand new. That's the main thing I cared about was my dad got his trailer back. So I don't know, man. I'm just glad my truck's here. I can I can fix the truck. It's not tore up too bad. It's tore up a little bit, but it ain't tore up too bad. Hell, there ain't nothing damaged on it other than maybe the the cab side that. I wasn't planning on replacing the cab side, but the cab corners I was going to replace anyway. So, it sucks. So at this point, we're just waiting for the detectives to make it down from Lincoln County. And while we're waiting on them to show up, Kenny Powers shows up as he was out looking for the truck and trailer too. I sent him the address so he could come down and check it out himself and maybe give me a hand if I needed some help. I really appreciate everybody who texted and called and messaged me and everybody that shared it on Facebook. It had over a thousand shares in, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. But anyway, we had a whole posse of people looking for this truck, one of which was my brother Jeremy, who happens to be dyslexic and he gets numbers and things screwed up in his head. And he got lost looking for the address but he stumbled upon someone walking along the road who looked completely out of place. So Jeremy turned around and followed this guy a quarter mile behind him as the guy's walking up the road and watches this guy start going through other people's cars and trucks and knows them through everybody else's stuff. So I let the detectives know that my brother has found someone that meets the description of the person that we saw in the surveillance footage. So when they got done at my truck, they went over and paid this guy a little visit. It turns out he gave them the exact same name of who he is as the identification left in my dually. And he also matches the description of the guy in the video. Given all this information, said crackhead admits to stealing my truck and abandoning it on High Point Road. So the Sheriff's Department cuffs him and stuffs him and takes him away to Lincoln County Jail where he'll be arraigned tomorrow morning. And hopefully he'll start his third stint in prison according to his documents. And we'll see how long he stays in jail this time. So anyway, back at the scene, Miss Harley shows up in her Suburban and brings a Sawzall so that Kenny can cut this signpost out of the side of my truck. Once we get this cut out and removed from the side of the truck, I'm hoping we can fire this thing up and check the rest of the truck out and make sure it still runs and drives okay. The dually fires right up, transmission goes in gear, no problem. So I pull the truck forward so we can load Kenny's Jeep on the back of the trailer, tow it home, and Kenny will just drive the 64 Chevy back to the shop. Sorry, man. It sucks. He must have really had to been beating on this thing for it to go through that. Yeah, he beat the shit out of it. He broke both mirrors. He hit something on this front fender like a construction cone and hit a sign on that side and tore the whole side up off the truck and that sign post we had to cut with a Sawzall. It went clear through the cab and then out through the cab protector in the back. How do you even manage to do that? I couldn't even try to do that. 
I'm just glad mom and dad's trailer's in one piece. It's muddy and dirty, but outside of that, the trailer's fine. Well, the shared fine. album has footage of the guy getting arrested. You can see that. That's what was sticking through the side of it right there. We had to cut it with a Sawzall. This that's one. the only thing that stopped him because when he went to back this piece up, was right here. when he went to turn around, in here, right here. that was wedged in the side of the truck. And when he went to back up, it was like digging in. And he, he just literally jumped out of the truck and abandoned it right in the middle of the road and took off across the this guy's yard, like clear out across this, like six acres through the fields and through the woods. And somehow Jeremy tracked his ass down and followed him in his pickup truck as the guy's walking and stayed with him and the police picked him up and he admitted to it, I guess. Jeremy said he admitted to it. They said that they've got him. The detective said, we've got you on surveillance camera. We got your bag of shit in my truck, oh. your beanie with your name in it, everything. He's like, yeah, it was me. So they, he left his stuff in the truck? Yeah, he left a bag of stuff in the truck with his ID in it, with his address and everything freaking idiot well man of the hour law dog law dog let's be honest you caught that guy because you're dyslexic and got lost oh no my maps wouldn't pull up and then i got lost and then i finally figured out where oh was. bullshit you called me and said thornville road i said no high point road in thornville yeah there was some of that kind of but nevertheless, his ass is in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I carried five bullets, though. <laughs>